Hello, today's lecture is by our dance faculty member, Peggy Murray. She specializes in historical dance, is also a dancer, a scholar, and a dance instructor. She holds a PhD in performance studies from Ohio University and works extensively with Renaissance and Baroque dance. Murray choreographs university and professional operas and has been a faculty member for the Amherst and Madison Early Music Festivals. She has performed and taught in the United States, Mexico, Colombia, Peru, and Argentina. Hi, everybody. I thought I would try to give you a little foretaste of what's in store for Madison Early Music Festival 2021, Dance Wise. Some of the things that we want to explore through our dance classes and also hopefully combined music and dance classes are really kind of exciting. So uh, I wanted to introduce you to a couple of the sources that we're going to be working with. Um, these sources are uh, really important in dance history because they contain a lot of information about boss dances in the Burgundian court at the very end of the 15th century. So bossa dances, as you probably know, are dances that are meant to be low to the ground and gliding. They're very stately. Um, generally, people think that they were processional dances, uh, danced by couples. Very often, couples, one behind the other, would do this sort of processional dance. It also seems possible that people could dance three abreast. And it also seems possible that uh, threesomes or couples could dance bossa dances alone without the company of all their friends with them. Uh, but let's take a look at some of these sources. The first is, please pardon the glare of this rather low tech presentation. Uh, our first source is the bossa dance dite de Marguerite d'Autriche or uh, as it's commonly known, the Brussels Manuscript or the Dancing Book of Margaret of Austria. And this is from about 1470, and it preserves the dance steps and music for 58, 59 bossa dances, depending upon how you count them. Um, I cannot show you this video right here, but you can certainly go to YouTube and search for Dancing Book of Marguerite of Austria. And you can see this like one minute video of this person paging through the book. And it's really quite beautiful, it's worth it. Um, the manuscript itself gives us some descriptive text about the dance steps. And I've taken a few little examples here. We have music for those dance steps, mostly just the tenor lines on which, of course, musicians could improvise. Um, a few of the dances, as in down here in the corner, a few of the dances contain regular notes, but the vast majority, uh, we're just given the tenor for those. To give you an even closer idea of how this works with the dance, I've blown one of these pages up, and here we have down here under the musical staff in the silver ink, we have a line of letters that denote dance steps. So we have a good idea of the order of the dance steps, but we also have a very good idea of how they went with the music. So taking a closer look, in this dance, Filla a Marie, Girls to Mary, on the bottom, it's not very clear, we have the original, but we have a transcription of it above. And you can see that we start with a, the big R here is a reverence, and then a B for Brawlo, which is a swaying sideways step, swaying left and right and two single steps or simple steps, and three double steps, two simple single steps, and then three, those three R's are reprise or uh, demarche steps that go, that step backward. 
So we have three backward steps and then a brala again. And that is the end of the first, um, the first phrase of the dance. And the phrases of these dances were very complex, very uh, formulaic. So one of the things that we hope to explore is how music can go with these formulaic step patterns. Um, another important source we have is this one by Michel Toulouse, sorry. And this is the Art and Instruction of Good Dancing. It's from about the same period. And this book contains virtually the same information as Margaret's Bossadance manuscript book. But this, it happens, is the first printed book on dancing in Western dance that, that we have that is extant. Now this book was printed in Paris and in fact, we find evidence of these kinds of bossa dances all over Europe from this time and later. In Italy, for example, bossa dances were contained within compilations of a variety of dances, some of which were much livelier with kicks and jumps and things like that. It appears that Burgundy might have been sort of the epicenter of the bossa dance, this kind of slow and gliding dance, in the late 15th century. But looking at Burgundian attire of the time might hold some clues as to why we don't have records of livelier dances being done here. The extreme pointy shoes uh, the length and character of the lady's overrobes. We even have this guy walking on her robe. Uh, and of course, the elaborate headwear for ladies. We've got some examples here, but here's here are some more. All of these factors seem like they would make jumping a bit problematic. So a nice staid low to the ground dance seemed kind of just the ticket for these kinds of clothes. So let's go from shoes determining that we stay low to the ground to two or three centuries later When we have European court attire, that specified a very different posture owing to heeled shoes. So the Baroque body has the weight pitched onto the balls of the feet. And of course, that raises the dancer up away from the floor. And in this, uh, this coming summer's Baroque dance classes, we'll explore a well-known ballroom dance for a couple called La Bourgogne. This is a dance by Louis Pecour, and it's preserved, and actually here is an example of Beauchamp Fouillet dance notation. And this system of notation, as well as this dance, La Bourgogne, were both published in 1700. And La Bourgogne is particularly fun because it's a multi-partite dance. It consists of a courant, which is slow but complicated rhythmically. Um, and then there's a bourree, which is very lively and jumpy. Then a nice, slow and elegant sarabande. And then a very quick, uh, lots of quick footwork passepied, which a passepied is kind of like a quick minuet. So we get four different dances in one, and we'll hope to explore the rhythms and tempos and some of the steps and step combinations for each. So that's it in a nutshell. And whatever kind of shoes you decide to bring to the Madison Early Music Festival, we'll have you covered. So keep well, keep healthy, keep dancing.